Welcome to yet another episode of the Whiskey Noobs Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Chris. Uh, Today, we've got a fun episode planned. We're going to be revisiting uh, Basil Hayden's 10-year rye. You might remember that from a few episodes ago, and I've got a little bit of a a twist that I want to try with this Basil Hayden's 10-year rye based on the review that I gave of it. Uh, But I want to start this episode off by just saying thank you to everybody who has been participating in the uh, questions and asking questions for me to answer on the show. Everybody who has been following the TikTok and helping to really get those videos out there, uh, that has been fantastic and I really appreciate all of your support. And of course, everybody who has joined the email list and is telling people that they know about the show and helping to spread the word. You guys have been very awesome uh, and I've very much appreciate all of that help. Now, I've already done a review of Basil Hayden's 10-Year Rye. I think that was episode 14, so if you haven't listened to that episode already, you're probably going to want to go listen to it because it was the motivation for this episode. So if I've already done a review of the whiskey, why am I reviewing it again? Well, you might recall from that episode that I got a lot of green apple flavors from Basil Hayden's 10-Year Rye, and I didn't expect that because before when I had drank it, I didn't really get a lot of that flavor. Now, I had mentioned that one of my theories for it was that I hadn't eaten yet that day, or I hadn't eaten recently. I think I had had lunch, and it was just before dinner that I was recording the episode. So my palate was pretty fresh compared to if you drink whiskey after dinner. And my theory was that I was getting more apple flavor because my palate was so fresh uh, than I would if I had just eaten. And I wanted to do an episode to kind of demonstrate how eating can change the flavors that you're getting from a whiskey. I have no idea how well this is going to work. I have no idea how much it's going to change for me with this specific whiskey. Uh, But I thought this would be a good one to try it with because I'm genuinely curious. Am I going to get the same flavors before I eat versus after I eat? So what I'm going to do in this episode is I'm going to do a quick review of Basil Hayden's 10-Year Rye, and I actually have not eaten yet today other than a little bit. Um, It's just after lunchtime, and I haven't eaten lunch yet because I wanted to wait until I did this review. So (laughs) I waited until early afternoon so that I could drink a little bit of this whiskey because I don't want to drink it in the morning for obvious reasons. And I'm going to do a quick review of it and see if I'm still getting as much green apple as I did last time, and I don't know for sure if I will, but at the very least, even if I'm not still getting those same green apple notes, I can at least see whatever notes I do get right now when I drink this, are they going to be the same as after I drink, or after I eat lunch, sorry. After I eat lunch, am I going to be getting the same flavor profile from this, and is it going to be the same experience, or how different, and how will it be different? So I think this is going to be kind of interesting to just see what happens um, because I've never done this before with a whiskey where I drink a little bit, eat, and then drink a little bit more of that same whiskey and do a review. So we're going to see what happens. We're going to go through this together. It might work. It might not. It might taste like the exact same whiskey after I eat. We're going to see, though, and I think this is a good whiskey to do it with because, like I mentioned, I previous to that review episode, episode 14, I had not gotten that much uh green apple or just apple from this whiskey before and I did not expect it and I'm pretty sure it's because I had never drank it with such a fresh palate before but we're going to see if that's the case or not so now my palate is as fresh as it could possibly be and we are going to do a quick three-part review of this whiskey so right off the bat on the nose I am once again getting that apple smell uh, without a doubt And it could also be partially in my head. You guys will know, especially for those of you who have been drinking along with us, the more you hear a flavor or think about a flavor, the easier it is for you to find that flavor in your whiskey. Um, So I am going to be biased a little bit because I'm looking for that green apple. Uh, But it'll be interesting after I eat because even with my bias towards the green apple, am I going to be tasting it as much? That's the question. So on the nose, I've got that green apple, and then I've got some light, um, sweet notes, maybe like a caramel or a vanilla. I can't remember last time how much spiciness I said I got, but I'm not getting a lot this time. I would say it's more of your your light sweetness, like that caramel vanilla that I mentioned, along with the apple, of course. I'm definitely still smelling the apple, uh, but not really a lot of, uh, let's say, cinnamon or nutmeg, maybe just a touch of cinnamon um but i don't know if that is because i'm kind of associating with like cinnamon apples but maybe there's a touch of cinnamon in there i remember now 
when I was smelling it before, I'm pretty sure I said it reminded me of like a caramel apple, and I, I see that again. It reminds me of those uh, green caramel apple suckers that you get for like Halloween. That's what it's reminding me of right now. I love those suckers, by the way. If you haven't had one, you could probably Google like green caramel apple sucker. Dude, you need to try one. They are amazing. They're one of the, the best suckers. I get so excited when I get those for Halloween, but <laughs> that's a little bit of a tangent, but that, that's what this is reminding me of a little bit. Okay, let's let's try the palette now. I, I'm I'm pretty set on the nose. I'm saying it's definitely kind of a caramel apple, maybe a little bit of a vanilla or a honey with that, but definitely that style of sweet is where we're where we're headed along with the apple. Your your bakery sweet and apple. I suppose before I give my palate, I should probably mention what I have and haven't eaten today. Just for the record, um, I did have coffee this morning with cream in it. Uh, and then I also did have a donut this morning uh, because I had an extra donut and I was like, yeah, we're eating a donut today. <laughs> but my point is that it's it's nothing very heavy except for maybe the coffee, uh, but not like a, a heavy, hearty meal. So after this, I will be planning to eat probably chicken fingers, I'm going to guess. Uh, and I'm going to guess I'll probably have some sort of chips with it or something for lunch. I'll let you know for sure when I come back. Uh, but my point being that that's a much heavier meal than what I've had already. So that way, we're very controlled. We know exactly what I have eaten today. And we're going to see what I eat for lunch. And then we're going to know exactly what I ate for lunch and see how it changes my experience at all. But on the palate... I am getting still a good amount of that green apple. Now, I don't think it's as much as last time. I will say that. I'd say it's more caramel and maybe cinnamon, but let me let me try again before I lock in on the cinnamon. Once again, I am reminded of what I love about this whiskey. It is so sweet when you first take a sip of it. It truly is. Um, I'm definitely still getting the green apple, maybe not as strong as last time, because I thought last time it was like one of the only things that I could taste. Uh, but I'm definitely, I'm getting like caramel apple, and then the caramel goes away to just kind of apple. And then on the finish, I'm getting a little bit of cinnamon. The finish isn't as dry as it was last time. I have no idea if that has to do with me drinking coffee today or how it's reacting with what's in my mouth. I have no idea. Um, but it definitely, and I haven't had the coffee recently. I had the coffee this morning, so that's a little, that's out of my system. I should add that not out of my system, out of my mouth, basically, I should add that. Um, but I definitely would say that I'm getting more of the caramel and the cinnamon than I remember getting. And I'm still getting a lot of apple, though, and I'm still getting way, way more green apple than I recall getting previous to episode 14 when I would just drink this previously and I had, you know, eaten all day and I'd been eating whatever meals I was eating. I do not recall getting this much green apple. That could also be that I just didn't notice it. You know, maybe the green apple was there and I wasn't calling out what that flavor was. I was just like, oh, this is kind of fruity, you know, uh, but I will say that I'm definitely getting – it's almost like a three-parter. Like they obviously blend together. They always do. But if I had to give it three parts, I would say caramel, then apple, then cinnamon or some kind of spiciness. But I'm, I'm going to call that cinnamon. Uh, that is kind of the transition that's happening on my palate. Yeah, I'm going to say that that's – I just tried it again, and I, and I think that is definitely the three-part palette that I'm kind of getting from it. Um, so it is a it is a pretty complex palette because it's transitioning. Now, you'll you'll recall that some whiskeys don't do that. Some whiskeys, you uh, drink it, and it's like, oh, this tastes like cherries and oak, and that's all you taste. And then it goes into the – and then you swallow, and then you have it finished. But you don't, through the course of having the whiskey in your mouth, taste three different things or two different things or any amount of different things. That's one of the things that, you know, a more um, expensive whiskey typically is a little bit more complex. Uh, this whiskey is semi-expensive. I think it's $60, maybe $70. Um, <clears throat> and it is a it is a pretty complex palate. Another thing I'll say is that it's, it's very, very sweet. Uh, not in the same sense as like your Buffalo Trace or your Four Roses that we've reviewed on here before. Not that kind of a... a dark sweetness, I guess. It's much more of a light sweetness, similar to the kind of sweetness that you would get from like a scotch or maybe an Irish, um, probably just because of the lack of corn in the rye uh, mash bill. You know, your corn brings you a very specific kind of sweetness. So when you get used to drinking bourbons, 
and then you try other things, you can pretty easily see the distinguishing factor that that corn makes because bourbons are usually a lot of corn, definitely more than half corn in their mash bill, but usually they're a lot. So you can definitely see the distinct difference. And this is a good example of it because you're still getting a ton of sweetness and even similar sweetnesses like the caramel and like a little bit of cinnamon that you do get in bourbons. But this is so overwhelmingly not that deep sweetness. It's much more of that light apple, light fruit sweetness with the little bit of caramel and little bit of cinnamon. Um, because I know one thing that a lot of people wonder, or at least I used to wonder, maybe not a lot of people, was like, okay, so every time I hear a whiskey review, they're mentioning something along the lines of caramel or honey or fruit or wood. They're mentioning like all these same flavors, maybe in a different order or something. So how is it that interesting? Well, this is a good example of that. If you're wondering that, it would be try a bourbon that you get a caramel flavor from, like Buffalo Trace. I recall I usually get caramel from Buffalo Trace. And then try something like this that I'm getting caramel from, and you'll see that it's still not the same. They both do taste like caramel, but they don't taste like each other. It's like Buffalo Trace tastes like caramel, which tastes like Basil Hayden. But Buffalo Trace does not taste like Basil Hayden 10-year rye. So it's a pretty interesting thing because what those notes are flavored with, or like what they're accompanied by, not flavored, but what they're accompanied by can have such a huge impact on how you're tasting that note. So caramel accompanied by green apple tastes super duper different than caramel accompanied by, uh, I forget what we said in Buffalo Trace, but let's just say, you know, your vanillas and your honeys. When it's just bakery sweets and dark fruit, it's super different than bakery sweets and light fruit or green apple. So that's something you want to keep in mind uh, is that that's why you can get so many cool combinations of flavors. Um, that's something I was wanting to address, and this seems like a great opportunity to do it because you're probably thinking, oh, caramel, so is that caramel and vanilla and a little bit of cinnamon? Does that taste like Buffalo Trace? Not at all, actually. It tastes super different from Buffalo Trace because of the way those notes play into each other, where they show up in the palate, how long they stick around during the finish. And with that, I should review the finish of this whiskey. So let's take another sip. So the, the highlighting factor of this right now is totally the green apple flavor that I get. Um, it sticks around during the finish, but I would say it sticks around more with your cinnamon and maybe just a touch of anise, which is another flavor that I said I get in Buffalo Trace or that I think maybe my guest Bryce said. Uh, it's another flavor that you do get from Buffalo Trace. There might be a touch of that in the finish of this. I don't really get it on the palate, but I think it's it's apple with a little bit more bitter of a flavor like an anise and then maybe some of your caramel, or not caramel, I'm sorry, cinnamon in there as well. The caramel goes away. It might linger a bit, uh, but it goes away overwhelmingly. If you're talking about what flavors are right up front, I'm definitely going to stick to your apple, your cinnamon, and then maybe a touch of anise as well. Uh, that is the three-part palette that I'm getting from this right now. So on the nose, you've got caramel and apple, maybe a tiny bit of spices. Uh, palette, kind of the same story. you got caramel and then apple and then cinnamon once again. Apple throughout the whole palette, though, is there. It is, it is pretty present, uh, pretty obvious for me throughout that entire palette. Uh, and then in the finish, once again, apple is pretty much present the whole time. And you've got, once again, your caramel, but it fades off really quickly in the finish. Uh, and then you've got your apple and then your cinnamon once again. But I would say, you know, it, it's kind of like you finish with the apple and the cinnamon on your palate. And those stick around a lot for the finish. But then almost, I think anise shows up a little bit. Your, your black licorice flavor. I think that does show up a little bit towards the end of the finish, which is really interesting. Definitely didn't get that in my last review that I remember. Um, but it's pretty pleasant because I don't normally like that flavor, but the way that it's paired with these flavors, I'm actually enjoying it. So that would be my three-part review before eating. Once again, quick rundown. This morning, I also didn't mention that I brushed my teeth. So this morning, I woke up, I had my cup of coffee, and then as I was finishing my cup of coffee, I had a donut. And then I pretty much didn't eat it all. I brushed my teeth, and then I sat around for a while until the toothpaste flavor went away from my mouth. And then just to be sure, on my first sip, I did swish it around in my mouth a little bit to get any remainder of toothpaste in my mouth. So this is as fresh of a palate as I could hope for 
without drinking whiskey first thing when I wake up. <laughs> so now I'm going to go eat a meal. I'm going to come back and I'm going to try to review this whiskey again. And we're going to see if it changes at all or not. Obviously, I'm going to be a little bit biased towards the notes that I just got because I can't wipe my memory and get rid of them. But it's going to be very interesting to see how those notes change. So fresh palate, just did a review. Let's go eat lunch and come back and do another review and see how it has changed. And we're back. It probably seemed like almost no time to you guys. <laughs> but in the meantime, I did eat lunch. I had some chicken fingers, uh, frozen chicken fingers with barbecue sauce. And I also had uh, chips and salsa with that. I know it's a weird combo, but my wife's out of town right now, so sue me. Um, we're eating out of the freezer and any kind of chips that are available. So that's what I had for lunch. Just wanted to let you know that way we know what my palate has seen in the past hour or so. Um, I did the salsa is a little bit spicy, which is important because spicy things can totally affect your palate, uh, kind of dampen it a little bit. Um, the barbecue sauce also a little bit spicy. Uh, so important things to keep in mind. They were, they were pretty strong foods. So, uh, that's definitely going to have an effect. Hopefully we'll see, uh, on, on my review of this whiskey. So, uh, without further ado, I want to, I want to start it up cause I'm super curious as to what's going to happen. So let's start with the nose. Okay. Uh, on the nose, I would say it's still caramel and apple. Um, I don't smell as much spice, but the spice was already very barely there. But I definitely think it is, and this is probably from the spiciness, it definitely seems less, like like just not as strong, which I'm very interested to take a sip now because uh, when I was taking sips earlier, it was like as soon as I take a sip, it was so sweet in my mouth. It was awesome. It was almost like there was like caramel in there. Maybe even I just realized one of the things I didn't put my finger on, maybe it was almost mapley, just a tiny bit, um, but definitely that syrupy caramel, caramely taste uh, as soon as it would hit my mouth before. So I'm interested to see uh, if I'm still going to have that or not, it's going to be very interesting. But I, uh, so far the palate definitely is dampened a little bit, or not the palate, I'm sorry, the nose is definitely dampened a little bit. I do still smell the apple, and I'm wondering, you know, now that that has shattered for me on this whiskey, like that glass shatter, tsh, oh my gosh, it tastes like apple. I wonder if I'll ever be able to not taste the apple, but we're going to try it with the palate, so I haven't done a taste yet. That was the nose. The nose is definitely a little bit dampened. Let's try the palate and see what happens. Okay, maybe it's a placebo effect. Who knows? Uh, but definitely, definitely the apple has dampened a little bit. Now, the whole palate has dampened, without a doubt. Um, definitely, probably because of how spicy, not spicy, but almost spicy, you know, tangy my food was. It really gets your jaws, that type of a thing, can dampen your palate. All the flavors have dampened. But I will say, I do think that the apple was dampened more than the caramel. So before the apple was kind of the front row seat, and I think it might take a back seat to the caramel or at least be even with it, which would totally make sense for why I haven't tasted it in the past, why I might have overlooked it. Um, now, like I said, maybe maybe it's a little bit of, of a placebo effect, but I'm, I'm, I really do think that it has dampened it a little bit. This is very interesting for me. Um, let me, let me, I'm going to try it again. Hold on. Okay, without a doubt, the apple is way less prevalent in the beginning. I think it still stands out in the finish, but without a doubt, it is less prevalent on the palate. I mean, I I can't imagine I can't imagine this just being a placebo effect. This it really does feel like I'm getting way more of the caramel and maybe more spiciness. I it, it almost does seem like Maybe not specific spices. I haven't nailed those down yet. But it does seem like there is more of the caramel in the spices with uh, the apple. And I can still taste the apple. Don't get me wrong. It's not like before where I thought, oh, I didn't taste apple at all. I can definitely still taste it. Um, but almost like uh, caramel and toasted wood. It, that Maybe it's not spiciness. It's more of a toasted wood that I think I'm getting from it now. And I definitely, definitely did not get that earlier. Uh, I'm about to take another sip, uh, but what I do want to say real quick is make sure you are telling people about the show who you think might enjoy it or who you think would enjoy the hobby. Uh, help to spread the word, and the easiest way to do that is to leave a review on Apple Podcasts, rate the show or review the show, uh, let, us, let me know what you think. 
Uh, and also that also helps to spread the word of the show. You can also help by sharing TikToks, sharing Instagram posts, anything you can do to help. Only takes a couple minutes, and it actually makes a very big difference. Um, so thank you to everybody who has so far, and I just wanted to remind you that here in the show. Uh, now I'm about to take another sip and just see, now that I've nailed down that toasted wood, I'm very interested because I think... I think that is something that I was overlooking in place of the apple, and now I think I'm getting more of it than I am the apple, so I'm going to try that again. Yeah, undoubtedly, uh, I am getting more toasted wood notes than before, and there's a little bit of woodiness in this, like even even earlier, um, but undoubtedly I'm getting more of those. It's like a newer toasted wood, um, similar to like the new white oak taste that you'll get from some bourbons. Uh, I would actually say similar to the Four Roses, not single barrel, uh, just the normal Four Roses that we drank last week. I think it's a similar flavor uh, to that to me. Um, just kind of a, a woody, toasted note. Uh, so that that's definitely coming up. And there's still apple, for sure, uh, but it's so dampened that I can totally understand overlooking it compared to when I had a fresh palate. And my guess is because it's a lighter fruit. It's not a super, you know, cherry, plum, apricot, those types of fruits, uh, I think it's easier to overlook. I really do. I think you can kind of just taste it and be like, oh, there's like a light fruitiness to this and not really nail it down. But it's definitely taking a backseat to the caramel and that, those toasted wood notes. The caramel's still on the front end, not nearly as strong as it was before I ate. Now, before I ate, when I take a sip, I could swear that there's like a little bit of caramel mixed into there. No joke. Uh, and now that I have eaten, it's definitely taken a back seat, uh, which is something that a lot of people know. Um, you're going to be able to taste flavors a lot better on a fresher palate. Now, I've never done an experiment to actually prove that, but it is definitely uh, an anecdotal piece of knowledge that has been passed through all, of, all everybody who enjoys whiskey knows that. Uh, the fresher your palate is, typically the more you're going to taste flavors and the more you're going to be able to pull out notes from the whiskey. But uh, it's definitely, I, I didn't expect it, I guess, to be this dramatic with the caramel on the first sip. The caramel is still the strongest note, but on the first sip previously, I mean, it was so sweet, especially the caramel and vanilla kind of mixture. Um, it was so sweet when I'd initially sip it, and now it's definitely uh, dampened a little bit. The apple has dampened as well, and then on the final, not the finish, but the, the end of the palate, I'm getting more toasted wood notes as well. Now I'm going to see how much the finish has changed. There's definitely still a little bit of anise, but I haven't really focused on the finish, so I'm going to do that right now. Something interesting with the finish is that I... Uh, you know, with the finish, you already swallowed it, so you kind of have to really focus on what flavors are lingering on your tongue. And now that I'm doing that, I can still taste the you know the food that I was eating earlier a little bit. I can still kind of taste those frozen chicken fingers, uh, it, just because you're focusing so hard on it. You know, if you eat a meal, let's say pizza, and an hour later, you can still, if you really are like, what am I tasting right now? And you kind of move your tongue around and try to taste it, you can still taste the pizza a little bit. It's definitely still there, so I can totally see how this influences the flavors that you're going to get. Now, I will say on the finish, there is definitely still anise there. Um, definitely still a little bit of caramel, but the caramel still goes away quicker, and it kind of takes away from the finish a little bit. Uh, like, the finish is, does not seem as complex as it seemed earlier, which is expected, but very interesting to actually experience, is that, you know... A lot of people judge a whiskey by how complex and how long the finish is, and this is having a huge impact. So it's just because you think maybe a whiskey doesn't have a very long finish, it might be because of your palate at the time, which is another reason that I always say, you know, if you want to say that you know what a whiskey tastes like, if I, if I say that I know what Jack Daniels, since it's like the most popular, tastes like, you have to have Jack Daniels many different times with many different palates at many different times of day to be able to truly know what quote unquote Jack Daniels tastes like because everything has a huge impact. Just day to day has an impact on your palate. You'll notice when I review a whiskey and then I drink it again on one of my non-review episodes that I get different notes because the whiskey has a set profile, but different parts of it are always emphasized depending on so many different factors, your palate being the biggest one, what you've been eating being probably the biggest one. 
Uh, but without a doubt, I mean, it, it's real. It's not fake. I'm, I'm getting super different flavors right now. Let me go through the finish one more time and really focus on it. That, that's what popped up last time. That's what I noticed immediately was that I still tasted my food a little bit. Uh, but let's try it. Let's see what we can taste in the whiskey. Okay. This is very interesting. Um, the caramel, once again, goes away pretty quick. It's there, but then it goes away. I'm still getting a little bit of the apple. If I reach for it, I can taste it a little bit. The spices, probably because spices are a bit more aggressive, are definitely more noticeable. Uh, and like the kind of the toasted woodiness that I was saying earlier with like maybe a little bit of cinnamon, definitely a little bit of anise. Uh, those are more noticeable as well. Something that is now noticeable and hasn't been before. Uh, it's very specific and I think it's not from the whiskey. I think it's the whiskey interacting with the food that I was eating. I can't perfectly nail it down, but the best way I can describe it would be like confection sugar, uh, powdered sugar. It almost tastes like powdered sugar that you'd put on like your, uh, you know, French toast or whatever. It kind of almost tastes like that. And I don't know where that's coming from. It's only on the finish because it's like it, when I'm moving my tongue to try to continue to get the flavors. It's definitely there. It's in like my nasal cavity. I can smell it. It's almost like if you smell confection or sugar, like when you sift it onto like your your French toast or when they sift it onto the, uh, they sprinkle it onto like your funnel cake. It's like that smell. Uh, it's so specific, but I've never gotten this from a whiskey before. So this is super interesting. Now this is another one where it'd be cool to try a different food. Let's, let's say steak. So it's totally different and see if I'm still getting that same flavor but I doubt I would. It it's so hard to describe, but it's almost like I can tell that it's from my meal. Uh, let me. I'm gonna try this again. No, it's it's definitely not in the palate. I just looked for it in the palate. Nothing, but it's definitely in the finish. Uh, it's almost like um, a candle. I I don't remember if this is a specific brand of candle. I think this is just a candle flavor that you can find places like a pink sugar is what they call it. Um, I think. Bath and Body Works probably either has or used to have like a pink sugar or pink sand. I think it's pink sugar candle. That's kind of what it's like, which always reminded me a bit of, of powdered sugar. But that is without a doubt that is in the finish right now, which is super cool. It's a very pleasant note. And <clears throat> it's almost uh, later in the finish. It's definitely more prevalent than the apple. Uh, the apple's there. Uh, and then it, it does fade out. Like I said, the spices kind of stick around. But then this confectioner sugar, this this powdered sugar flavor is lingering, which is super neat. I did not anticipate that at all. Um, I for sure expected this to, you know, kill certain flavors for me, kind of like how it killed the apple. But I did not expect this to create a different flavor, like kind of interact in a way that makes it seem like there's a different flavor in there. But it's a very pleasant flavor. And I'm guessing it's coming from the frozen chicken fingers. I don't know. Or maybe I guess it could be the corn chips, like the chips and salsa. I don't really know. I'm not an expert, but it's for sure a new flavor that I haven't gotten before. So that's really interesting. Uh, so I guess that pretty much nails it down that what you eat has a huge effect on what you taste. I mean, this has totally changed my review of this whiskey, and it just reinforces if you want to truly know a whiskey, you need to drink it at different times, uh, not just different times of day, but different palate conditions uh, in order to truly, truly like know the profile of a whiskey. So just keep that in mind that maybe you have a bad experience with a whiskey, and especially if it's a whiskey that a lot of people like, maybe it's because of your palate. Maybe it's something you ate interacting with it giving you a bad flavor. Those are all important things to keep in mind because... I mean, I'm I'm pretty mind blown. I knew it was gonna change it, but wow, this is this has been an awesome experiment to do. I'm glad I got to try it for the first time uh, on on the microphone here, so you guys could could hear it. I want to challenge everybody listening to the show right now to try this next time, especially like if you're making dinner and you're getting dinner ready, try a little bit of one of your favorite whiskeys beforehand. Do sit down, do a review. Maybe your you know your chickens on the stove or something, and you've got a few minutes. 
do that, eat your dinner, and then try it again and write it down. I didn't write it down, but I've obviously been recording it. Uh, but write it down because this is a super cool experience. This was a really cool experience. Um, I want to challenge everybody listening to do that. If you do it, let me know what you think, especially let me know what whiskey you try and what change you get, <clears throat> what change you get in flavors from the whiskey. Uh, because that is very interesting. I'm very interested to see what people think. So you can either send me an email uh, at the email whiskeynoobspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you could message me on Instagram or uh, you could comment on my Instagram. Now, I know on Instagram, in order for a message to for sure get through, you have to be following the person, but I do allow messages from my listeners, just so you know. Uh, it'll give me the option to ignore your message or to read it. And I always, if it's a listener, I always read it. Sometimes it's you know, spam or whatever. But if it's a listener, I always, I always move you to my primary inbox. So message me and let me know what you think. Uh, and I'm super excited to see what people think. I'm definitely going to be trying this on some of my own whiskeys without a doubt. But that is all that I have for the episode today. Thank you for listening to this episode of Whiskey Noobs. If you like the show, make sure to help spread the word by introducing friends, coworkers, or anyone that you think would be interested. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the show on your favorite streaming platform, rate the show, review the show, and follow on Instagram at whiskey underscore noobs to stay up to date. If you want, you can join the email list by sending an email to whiskeynoobspodcast at gmail.com. You'll then be updated every month on what whiskeys I'll be drinking on the show so you can drink right along with me and review it as we go. Thanks again for listening to the Whiskey Noobs Podcast. Learn to drink, drink to learn. The Whiskey Noobs podcast does not support underage or otherwise irresponsible consumption of alcohol.